Hey everyone, welcome back to another Cloudisms video. I've got three more build guides for you. Today we are focusing on the Warlock Solar 3.0 update. And I must admit I was anticipating to hate this and not enjoy any of the changes done to the Warlock class, but I must admit that I am pleasantly surprised with a couple of the things I was able to accomplish with these builds. Uh, so posting the drama aside, I know a lot of people are upset with how Dawnblade was reworked. I'm not really going to comment on that. All I'm going to say is that the aspects are a little disappointing. <laughs> I wish we had more options and I wish it probably wouldn't take a year to get more aspects added to the old subclasses. But that aside, let's talk about the build we are running today. So the weapons aren't super, super important. However, I did synergize very well with the build with my weapon choice. I am using the BXR with Demo and Adrenaline Junkie just so I can benefit from getting more grenade energy with my weapon. And whenever I get a grenade kill, I'm doing a 33% damage increase with Adrenaline Junkie. Um, I did try to make this work with blunt execution rounds. I'm a huge fan of blunt execution rounds. As a perk i think it's really interesting however i did find that it was just not consistent enough at being a quick easy to use solution and it was more something i had to think about and use rather than just having a plug and play always have more damage so i'd encourage you to try it out if you can get the muscle memory down to use blunt execution rounds you're going to be very happy with this build i'm using wither horde uh, you could easily slot in something like Izanagi's or Arbalist if you'd like. All of these are going to be great solutions. However, uh, we'll talk about why I'm using Wither Horde a little bit later. I'm using a solar rocket here. I also like these two grenade launchers. I think they're super neat. I just don't have the role I want. Uh, you can use a sword, whatever you like, honestly. This is very plug and play, and you can work it to your own choices. So for the super, I am using Daybreak. Uh, Daybreak is kind of questionable at the moment. I don't know how much I enjoy it. It just seems like a nice DPS filler for when you're out of options. It can be great at ad clear in certain situations. I know in GMs, at least last season, there was a couple of situations where having a Dawn Blade with the, well, with what now is the Ignition, uh, would have been super strong. So I'm gonna stick with it just for the sake of this build. However, you can slot in Well of Radiance and you won't see too much of a difference. You'll just be getting your ult a lot faster and you can heal and help your teammates. Uh, for the abilities, I am rocking the new Phoenix Dive. I never really liked the wells. I don't know, I, this is probably a very hot take, uh, but these just aren't for me, so this is a nice change of pace. The cooldown is exactly the same, and it's actually going to be a great source of ignition for us, and that's thanks to our aspects. So let's cover that real quick. Um, the aspects, as I said earlier, are a little lacking. You've got Icarus Dash, which uh, doesn't really provide you any direct feedback in game for increasing damage cooldowns anything like that it's just a movement tech really um, feel free to slot it if you like it however in this case we're using heat rises to pair with our phoenix dive that is because running this aspect and having heat rises applied by holding our grenade uh, we will get a little scorch upon using our phoenix dive which is incredibly incredibly helpful this is going to be a very in your face play style where you're going to ignite an enemy by first using your melee or your grenade and then diving on them to do an ignition and it's pretty cool uh, the healing itself is also quite nice however the main reason i'm using it is for the scorch if this was like stasis where casting these could also scorch i would consider using them but in this case i'm using this for the scorch itself the glide is up to you i like burst glide um, however all the glides are going to feel pretty bad <laughs> while you're running heat rises and you have the buff proc just going to point that out uh, we're using the new incinerator snap simply because the celestial fire doesn't give you any scorch or anything like that it does have a longer cooldown as well uh, but it's got longer range, and I'm not sure I haven't tested the damage, but I imagine this would be higher damage. It's also probably better for PvP. PvE, though, we're using this for Scorch. It's going to be fantastic for that just by itself. I'm running the Solar Grenade because we are using the Sun Bracers. This is really the only grenade I would ever use with this build, as should you. Heat Rises, I'll mention that we are also using this for the side effect of 
final blows while we're airborne increase the duration of heat rises i don't really care about that and grant us melee energy which is super super helpful however i'll just mention real quick that trying to play around heat rises can be incredibly incredibly annoying if you're just trying to float all the time and only kill enemies while you're floating you're probably going to hate it so i would say don't really focus on making yourself airborne and killing enemies unless you're used to the muscle memory and you like floating around so with that aside let's cover the only other useful aspect on the solar warlock and that is the touch of flame of course this is a mirror of the void walker one that makes your grenades better basically so in this case our solar grenade will have a linger duration that is longer um, it'll also shoot out little blobs of lava that do some nice extra damage for our fragments and this was actually a pretty difficult choice since we only get four fragments here with our aspects um, we are starting off with the ignition aoe increase from ember of eruption this is because we can have so many different sources of ignition with our melee grenade and our phoenix dive uh, so it's very important to spec into this you also get a nice plus 10 strength just for slotting it we are running the ember of torches uh, just so we can get that extra 25 percent damage buff from radiant just by hitting enemies with our melee we are going to be spamming our melee all the time so this is going to be a very very nice damage buff to our weapons uh, we're using the ember of searing here by defeating scorch targets it gives us more melee energy our build heavily relies on having our melee ability up so it's very important to have ember of searing slotted here I'm also using Ember of Blistering by defeating enemies that are, well, defeating enemies with solar ignitions will give us some more grenade energy. Obviously, grenade energy is going to be very important here as well. And if you did want to change anything out, this is the one I would change simply because we're getting so much of our grenade energy simply from our melee. So if you were going to change it out, I would recommend something like you could run the... Uh, Benevolence, whenever it gets re-enabled, the Ember of Char would be really nice as well, and the one that makes the uh, Solar Super Cause Ignition is also good. This will make your Super feel a lot better in higher level content because you'll be doing the huge Ignition damage. Uh, with the subclass out of the way, let's talk about the mods we're running. On my helmet, I've got Elemental Ordnance, so I'm spawning walls with grenade kills. I've got Harmonic Siphon, so when I'm getting kills with my BXR or my rockets, I'm going to be dropping wells that I can power up myself for later. We're using Ashes, Ashet. I can never say this, I'm so sorry, Ashes to Assets to get bonus super energy on grenade kills. And this is again another point where it's like, you got to consider if the Daybreak is going to actually be worth it, because this will be absolutely loading you up on super energy. So maybe you can throw in a well and just pop wells all the time give all your teammates all the orbs you would like uh, for our gloves we're using the sun brazers if you didn't know how these work it gives you increased duration so that pairs nicely with the aspect that already increases the duration and most importantly we're getting solar melee kills grant unlimited solar energy for a brief time so this allows us to spam our solar grenades we can have like six out at a time just with these, this little buff from the Sun Bracer. So this is going to be a very, very pivotal point of the build here. We're running Elemental Charge. This is another essential object here. This is be this basically if we pick up one of our Solar Wells, we'll get two stacks of Charge with Light. It's very, very important for this build. We're also using two melee kickstarts. This is so that when we use our melee, we're going to get a huge chunk of our melee energy back upon expending it. On our chest piece, we are running Fonts of Might. You can, if you'd like to use weapons that aren't solar for whatever reason, you can change this out for, I would recommend Bountiful Wells or Explosive Well Maker. Uh, you could even slot Well of Life if you feel you need the extra healing. However, I feel like the Warlock Kit gives you plenty of healing to work with, to start with. Uh, we're using the new artifact mod, Armor of the Dying Star, just to get that extra reduction. I'm running a Rocket Launcher, so I've got a Reserve on for that. Uh, very importantly, we're running Melee Wellmaker, so if we get a kill with our little finger snap, we're going to get a well for it. Insulation here is very nice because it will reduce our class ability cooldown when we pick up orbs from our helmet mod. Same here with Better Already, we'll get a nice little health regeneration immediately after picking up an orb. On the mark, we are running the Arc mod, Heavy Handed. 
Uh, this is when we're charged with light using our melee, we'll consume one stack and will give us a huge chunk of melee energy ability. Now do consider, read the little blurb down there with the blue text. If you're surrounded and if you want to use a fusion, a solar fusion would be great, or a stasis one if you'd like, a shotgun, SMG, or sidearm, all of these weapons are going to have a fantastic buff where your weapons will pull from the reserves as you get kills. It's super, super nice. And if you want to run something like Teraba, this will be, oh my god, insane. So feel free to configure the weapon loadout to match this because this is a absolutely fantastic charge of light mod. We are also using Outreach, so when we uh, use our class ability Dive, we'll get a nice chunk of melee cooldown. So as you can see, we're really specking into getting our melee back so we can take advantage of the Sun Racers perk. Um, as for the weapons, as I said before, uh, feel free to slot in whatever you'd like here. I feel like this pairs very nicely with the Heat Rises edition of the Wild Airborne. You don't have to think about it. You just shoot a pull down and jump around all you want, and you'll be getting tons of free melee energy. Uh, I would consider something like previous uh, Prometheus lens here. Uh, the matchbook would be good. Honestly, anything that you really like can slot in here. However, the, the demolitions perk is going to be a huge point in getting my grenades back, so I can always make sure I have heat rises when I need it. And uh, I think that covers all of the weapons. Let's go ahead and jump into the gameplay so we can see how this build works in game. Alrighty, so here we are with the first build, and I do want to just let you guys know before I start fighting over here, I said a lot of the stuff I'm going to show you is going to be kind of impossible to slow down and talk about it as it's happening. I encourage you to just look at my buffs on the left to kind of see exactly what's going on. I'll try to explain it my best while I'm kind of walking around, but with the buff timers being a little low, it's hard to stop and point it out. The main thing I want you to take note of is whenever I melee, I'll have that unlimited grenade energy, and also the charge with light I'm going to pick up is going to uh, reduce my, or actually not reduce, but increase the amount of melee energy I get back. So just keep a lookout on my cooldowns and kind of watch what's going on. So here we go. We're going to start off by eating our grenade. This is so that if we're ever floating like this and we kill an enemy, we'll get more melee energy from killing him. So let's just start off with a melee here. And we get a well off of that. And as you can see, I could throw as many grenades as I wanted to now. It's best for me to float while I'm doing this, so I get my melee back. As you can see, I already have my melee back. If I pick up a well, I'll get a nice little chunk of grenade. And my grenades are just going to kill everything. Let's go ahead and get another melee kill so we can spam some more grenades. Easy peasy. And we'll just start chucking grenades, trying our best to float while we're getting these kills so we get our melee back. As you can see, we're just kind of melting through these enemies. I haven't even shot a bullet yet. Uh, let's throw a melee at this guy. It's not going to kill him, so we're going to have to do some more stuff. As you can see, we still have our melee. We could use another one and just keep spamming grenades at our leisure. And we're just killing everything. We're dropping wells for, you know, if our teammates were here, we'd have tons of wells on the ground for them. And our weapon's going to be doing an insane amount of damage from the added buff of my Adrenaline Junkie, plus the Radiant I'm getting from my melee. It's just a fantastic combination that is really, really easy to pull off. As you can see, I do have a charge with light stack right now, actually two of them. I'll just show you how much melee energy I get back just from doing one melee. You can see we're already halfway full. Um, we could even do our little Phoenix Dodge and get a little bit more. I didn't show it off, so um, I will cut in a clip just after I'm done explaining what happened here, uh, with uh, the Phoenix Dive doing a Scorch. And you may have noticed we didn't really get any ignitions throughout this whole fight. That's just because our grenades are killing absolutely everything before there's even a chance to ignite. So whenever you're fighting higher health bar enemies, that's when you're going to be igniting things, whether you're it's in a GM or it's just some chunky bosses that might be around in the world. So uh, first you're going to ignite them with your melee or your grenade, and then follow up with whatever wasn't used. And if you've got your Phoenix Dive, you can even use that as an additional Scorch. So hopefully that covered this build pretty well. Uh, I'll go ahead and cut in that footage, and then I'll see you with the next build. All right. Alrighty, so this is going to be showcasing the Scorches we can pull off leading up to an Ignition with our abilities. So I'm going to start out by consuming Heat Rises so that I can do a Scorch with my Dive. And what I'm going to do is do a Melee first, and then as you can see, you Scorch now, and now if I do my Dive, it'll do a nice Ignition dealing a bunch of damage. I also have my Grenade back so I can Ignite him again. 
As you can see, he's scorched up now. I can do my melee. And there's another ignition. Got my grenade back again. He's ignited. There he's scorched. And now he's going to ignite, but he's already dead. So just by using my abilities, that whole health bar is completely destroyed. I've got as many wells as I could ever want. And my guns are killing everything. So hopefully that showcased the ignitions side of this pretty well. And uh, here is the next build. Alrighty, here we are with the second build. And before I press any buttons, I just want you to bear with me. You might see some exotics and think, what is this guy doing? But just trust me on this. Click to the gameplay if you want to, you know, see with your own eyes. But I really think this build is something special. So, again, <laughs> bear with me. Don't mind how my Warlock looks atrocious right now either. That's just the side effect of the insanity of this build. Uh, but let's start out with the subclass. Okay, so I did switch to Well of Radiance here. Uh, just because I like some of the effects that will pair nicely with uh, my artifacts here. <laughs> Um, I also think it's just, you know, it's it's Well of Radiance. It's an easy put on and use it. I don't find myself using Daybreak all that much anyways. So this is a nice, quick, cooldown healing well. Simple as that. Whoops, let's not back out of that. Uh, we're using the Empowering Rift specifically to pair it with our Exotic. And we'll talk about that when we get to our Exotic. Uh, Burst Glide, of course, is my preference. Incinera Incinerator Snap here. Uh, you could, again, swap this out. However, uh, just having the ability to scorch things is incredibly important to me, so I'm going to keep it on no matter what I'm doing. We are using the Fusion Grenade here to pair with our Exotic, um, and our aspects are unchanging, of course, because they are the only two things that make any sense whatsoever, in my opinion. And we are going to be benefiting from the Fusion Grenade Explodes twice from our aspect here, and we'll see how that plays out in the gameplay. Um, for our fragments, we're using the Ember of Singeing here. This gives me some a class ability regen when I scorch targets. However, this really isn't necessary. We can easily slot this out for something that we might prefer. You could even use the Ember of Tempering here for that extra recovery since we're on the Empowering Rift and not the Healing Rift. Uh, you could even put on stuff like the Ember of Solace. Whatever you think would work best for this. Uh, even Ember of Torches, however, you won't really need it with the Empowering Rift. Just keep in mind that this is the only one I would change here. We're using the Ember of Eruption to increase the AoE of our Ignitions, and we're also using the Ember of Blistering to get some grenade energy with our Ignitions. Uh, we're running Ember of Ashes to get some more Scorch stacks, and that's as simple as it gets. For our weapons, uh, you could run Double Special with this, and I recommend you try it out and see if it's for you. However, I'm just going to stick with a Osmosis Fatebringer here. Um, I am using the Prometheus Lens. The Trace Rifles were just buffed, so this is going to be very nice in the current sandbox. I've been testing it out. Whoops, I don't even have a kill tracker on. But uh, it feels really, really good. I highly recommend you give it a shot. Uh, Rocket, of course, whatever you want to use here is up to you. On my helmet, I don't know if the mods have changed, but I doubt it. We are running Elemental Ordnance, a Harmonic Siphon, and Ashes to Assets. We are running uh, Elemental Charge still on our gloves, but this time we have two Grenade Kickstarts. We're going to be heavily leaning into our grenades, so this is a no-brainer. On our chest piece, we are running Bountiful Wells. You could slot this out for something like Explosive Wellmaker, but you won't really see that much of a difference between the two. Just kind of do whatever you want to do. You could even put on Well of Life if you feel you need the healing. We are running the new Artifact Trace Rifle Reserves just to get some nice ammo additions to our... What's this called again? Prometheus Lens. <laughs> Don't mind me forgetting the name of the weapon I'm using. We're using Armor of the Dying Star once again. And to talk about this exotic for a moment, it says here that we get an additional fusion grenade and uh, it recharges from empowered weapon damage. So what that means is whenever our weapons are empowered, uh, getting kills will fill up our fusion grenade energy. So that's standing within an empowering rift. I believe that applies to anything that empowers, such as uh, the new radiant effect or anything else that grants empowerments. Don't quote me on that, but I believe that's how that's worked with my limited testing. You also get your rift energy back with fusion grenade kills. So hopefully that's sparking some plugs in your head. Uh, just know that we need our empowerment rift so we can easily get our grenades back and we'll be getting our empowering rift back super easy just by getting grenade kills. Uh, we are going to be running Fonts of Might once again. Of course, this is a no-brainer for our weapon selection. We are using Insulation and Better Already. Those are up to you. 
on our class item. We are spending our charge with light with firepower. This just gives us a chunk of grenade energy back when we throw a grenade while charged with light. So it's going to be very good at keeping consistency on having our grenades whenever we want them. We also got bomber for the very same reason. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut to the gameplay here so you can see what's going on and hopefully you'll be as impressed with this as I was. Alright, so here we are with the second build, and the highlight of this build is going to be the grenades as well as the Prometheus lens. So as you can see, I got a grenade kill there, and it gave me a nice solar weapon boost. I can kill more enemies with grenades if I wanted to, but the main highlight here is if I stand in my well, I'm going to be doing a ton more damage with my solar weapon boost, plus the empowerment effect from the well, and I'm getting my grenade energy back just from killing enemies inside the well. Um, so I'm going to walk over here and show you that our well will also scorch these enemies. You can see a nice little scorch is applied to them. I'm going to throw my grenade to ignite everybody, and everything will just explode. As you can see, the damage done by the grenades here is quite substantial. It doesn't actually ignite itself, so if they're just throwing one grenade, it won't do an ignition, but it will do a ton of damage, and you could just ignite it with the second grenade, thanks to our chest piece. You can see we're just absolutely shredding all of the enemies here. The boss died in what felt like just two grenades, so I'm very, very impressed with how much damage is being outputted just by this uh, build with the grenades as well as the Prometheus lens. It'll clear out everything you need it to. So quite simply, that's all there is to the second build. Uh, I'll see you in the third one. Alrighty, here we are with the final build. And I gotta say, this was really, really hard to narrow down what I wanted the final build to be. There are so many fantastic exotics on the Warlock, but as you can see, I ended up going with the Necrotic Grips paired with the Thorn. Um, I do highly recommend you try out some other exotics as well. Verity's Brow is always going to be a mainstay in a lot of people's builds. Um, also, the Claws of Ahamkara can have some fantastic synergies with the new Solar Melee as well. Uh, you may even want to try out Phoenix Protocol with the Tried and True Well build. Mantle of Battle Harmony is going to be great as well. Assembler, Filaments, the usuals. Just know that there's so many options you can make work. And it really was a difficult time trying to narrow down what I wanted these to be. So getting into what's changed at the subclass. Uh, whatever you'd like to use for your super will work here. Um, I'm just going to stick on Daybreak. Actually, you know what? We'll put on Well of Radiance. Um, the Phoenix Dive, I'm using it the same way I did in the first build, where this is just going to be another source of scorching enemies. I'm using the Burst Glide uh, still, and we're using the Incinerator Snap to pair nicely with our Necrotic Grips. I'm still using the Solar Grenade. Uh, you could use whatever you'd like, however, just try to stick to something on the same Touch of Flame artifacts. You could pair the Fire Bolts, I feel like that would pair pretty nicely, or the Healing Grenades, whatever you think would work best for your build. We are still using Heat Rises for the same reasons mentioned in the first build, most importantly the granted melee energy while we have Heat Rises active and we're airborne. In the first fragment slot, we'll be using the Ember of Benevolence whenever it is re-enabled in the game. Uh, this will allow you to get some increased grenade melee in class ability regen whenever you do a Phoenix Dive near a teammate. So I highly recommend slotting this on because it'll help you with your cooldowns a huge amount. Uh, we are going to be using the uh, Ember of Torches here again to grant Radiance since we're not using the Empowering Rift. We do want to make sure we have a source of empowerment and this will be our preferred way of gaining it. Uh, we are using the Ember of Searing by defeating Scorched Targets. We get melee energy for obvious reasons to pair with our gloves. Uh, we are using the Ember of Blistening here. This is the one that I would slot out for this particular build. Uh, you might want to put on the AoE Ember that makes your ignitions do bigger explosions. However, I really value the grenade energy benefit from this, so I'm going to keep it on. Uh, with that being said, let's jump into the armor. I do believe everything is identical from the first build, but we'll check it out just to be sure. We have Elemental Ordnance, we have Harmonic Siphon and Ashes to Assets to get our super quicker. Uh, you may want to put on an Arc Helmet. I believe it's on an Arc Helmet that gives you the... Whatever it is that gives you melee energy. Let's see. Do I have an Arc Helmet I can show you? Yes. Uh, yeah, you might want to use Hands-On instead here since you're going to be spamming your melee. This will get you a lot more super energy just from having Hands-On applied. 
we are using necrotic grips and if you don't know how these work whenever you use your melee you're going to apply poison to anybody that it hits and whenever those enemies die while they still have the poison effect on it will spread it to nearby targets so it's an insanely strong aoe explosion that will apply to every enemy nearby it's really really powerful and i'd highly recommend you try it out this also works with thorns so whenever you get a thorn kill it will spread that exact same poison from these gloves we're using melee kickstarts twice this is to get our melee back elemental charge we're going to be using it for the same reason as the first build to pair with heavy handed we are running Fonts of Might on our chest piece. However, this is definitely a slot outable option. Since we're not using an elemental weapon as our ad clear weapon, you might want to switch it out for Bountiful Wells, Explosive Well Maker, Heal, uh, Well of Life, whatever you want to slot in. However, I feel like this will benefit my other two weapons quite heavily, so I'm gonna keep it on. I've also got a reserve and the armor of the Dying Star once again. We're using melee, melee well maker because we are going to be getting a ton of melee kills. Uh, if you'd like, you can change out the elemental ordinance for a second melee well maker. It does stack, so you can make two wells with one kill. Try it out and see what works best for you. However, I find that having two ways of getting it from two different cooldowns helps me out with sustain. We're using insulation and better already from our orbs. However, uh, again, we're not going to be using Harmonic Siphon too, too much. You can change this out for Kinetic Siphon, maybe take off a stat mod if you want to be killing enemies primarily with your Thorn. Um, on the Bond, we're using the exact same mods as the first build with Heavy Handed and Outreach. Uh, that's about it. For the weapons, we are using Thorn. Hopefully a Catalyst comes out for it soon, please, Bungo. Um, we are using Explosive Personality here. I do have a Disruption Break on mine, so my Thorn will do more damage to enemies whose shield I break with auto-loading. This will be nice because it's a solar wave frame. It's super easy to clear adds with it, and it does a ton of damage when needed. Uh, you can also slot this out for a Sniper. I do find myself using my Sniper with this build quite often. And Heavy, as always, can be whatever you want it to be. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump into the final build. Alrighty, so here we are with the final build and it's gonna play a, a lot similarly to the first build. However, uh, a lot of the things we did are gonna be slotted in with just killing enemies with our thorn. So I tried to pick an area with a high enough density. However, these enemies aren't gonna have too much health. So it's not really gonna show off how potent the thorn poison is. Uh, but hopefully it'll give you a good idea of what's going to be going on. So again, we're going to eat our grenades so we get our melee energy back when we're floating. And we're just going to start killing enemies. So as you can see, I already got my melee back. And when I killed those enemies, a nice little green cloud popped out. So let's try to kill somebody isolated. Nope, that just killed everyone. But as you can see, the poison spreads and it kills all those enemies. We already have our melee back once again. If we kill enemies with our thorn, it will also spread that poison. So we'll kill this guy. <coughs> Excuse me. And as you can see, everybody died just from killing one enemy. We can use our melee, same way. We already almost have our melee back. Uh, we can go <laughs> and just kill everything super easily. Um, let's go ahead and get a well. So we'll kill this guy. Hopefully that reached. It did. Let's get a well, and we're going to test out our shield break thing. As you can see, my weapons are going to do a ton of damage to this guy. Easily done. And if we wanted to scorch this guy, she's the same thing where we land and it'll scorch him. And then we can do this, he'll ignite. Easy peasy. So yeah, this uh this is very strong. It's very, very good for ad clear, as you could see. Um, I could use my super if I really needed it, but everything's just gonna fall over thanks to the poison paired with the scorching. It's a really, really nice combo, and you could even scorch with the well <laughs> as well. So hopefully that showed that off. Uh, it's pretty simple how this one works. So hopefully it was covered carefully. Um, with that being done, that's the final build. Thank you guys for watching. I really did get some nice feedback from the last video and plenty of people gave me some likes and stuff. So it was nice to see people actually enjoying the video. Uh, if you do enjoy this, leave me a like again. It helps me motivate to make more of these. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you later. Peace.